today we're making rusted winter wonderland DIYs. Keep watching! I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own DIYs. The first project is a birdhouse sign. We're going to start off with some scraps of greenery, some paint and a brush, school glue stick, a calendar page of your choice, and here's the one I'm using. This is the artist, and then a Dollar Tree sign. This is just a Christmas one that we're going to remove the tag, the hanger off of, and then just smooth out any lumps and bumps. You know how it is with these projects. Some are perfect, some are not. I'm going to start by adding parchment white or parchment something, and I'm going to add it to here. I want this to be kind of streaky. I always like to add a little bit and then layer it up so that I don't get too much on the board, and I want to kind of mimic this onto this board. I want it to look like it belongs together. And that's close enough to me. I like that there. I am going to just figure out where I want to put it on the board. Remember the little holes at the top because that's where the hanger goes and then start putting down your glue. Y'all, I'm so sorry about the first post of this video because I did not have audio. I was having problems with my computer. I talked to a IT whiz this morning and he got me all fixed up. Would you believe it was just the drivers? Gosh, sometimes it's the simplest things. It took me several days, almost a week to deal with this, but he easily did it in just a few minutes. It's craziness, but I'm so grateful for people like that. Yes. Okay, so we got out all the lumps and bumps. Now y'all, this braid is some type of a, I don't know, what type of rope-like, paper-like fabric, but it actually came off of an old trunk that uh, I bought at a garage sale many, many years ago. And by many, many, I am talking about probably 15 years ago. I am going to just use some hot glue and put this down on the border, kind of between the sign and the edge of the calendar page. I wanna be sure I cover up the hole on the calendar page so it doesn't just scream calendar page. If you don't have this picture, that is totally fine. Use whatever type of a calendar you have. You can use one that the bank sends out or that you get from any group that you're in or a church calendar, or you can get one from Dollar Tree because they have plenty of beautiful pieces there. Mine is rustic because that's what I like to do in my house. So that's what I'm showing you here. And I'm so into birds. I have been for a long time, but actually crafting with them and incorporating them in my home decor is something that I have been uh, enjoying of recent, if you've seen my cardinal videos. I'm going to go over this edge too, the same way. I'm just kind of zigzagging it. I don't want glue like squishing out around that um, trim there because I think it's really pretty and I don't want to make it look kind of gross with all the glue globbed up. I'm just looking at it now to see if I want to put sides on it or not. So you could always use, leave sides off if you didn't want to use them. And what if you don't have this trim because not many people are going to have a trunk that they can pull it off of. Use whatever type of trim you want or you can use yarn or you can use ribbon or you can use raffia. Whatever you want to use to trim out your page or you don't have to use anything at all. But again, rustic and I love to reuse things. So this is a perfect way for me to remember this trunk by having it right here. And by the way, the trunk held lots of things for my oldest two children until it just really fell apart. And um, I just kind of salvaged the pieces I thought I could use again. I'm just simply gonna use some jute to do this little hanger and I'm gonna put it around to the back, make sure that it's the length that I like, and then I'll be adding little pieces of um, just some cut up scrap paper here to hold it on the back. We can start next with a greenery. And these are thrifted pieces that I have used on so many projects and I still have some left. They did come from the thrift store, but you can get yours anywhere. I decided to pull off the pine cone. I'm gonna add a little bird. This is like a little plaster, I don't know what kind of bird. I had a bag full that I thrifted at birds and mushrooms and pine cones and berries and butterflies. And so you'll be seeing those again this spring for sure. To make this easier to handle while I hand paint this little bird, I am going to just hot glue a little stem on the inside that fits, and we'll cut it off later. I'm using some gold, brown, and blue because they match the color of the bird, the well, the birds that I already have in my picture. So I want him to look like maybe he just flew right out of that picture, right? He flew out of there and he just did his own thing and he has his own little nest outside of the picture. 
I'm not going to show you the entire time I hand paint this because I am not a pro at this. This is just, you know, I'm a crafter. I'm not a professional by, professional by any means, but this was fun to me. I really like this. And it's just paint. You can always paint over it if you don't like, you know, the way that it looks. And you can use little birds that you already have, like a little bird figurine or a little birds that maybe you got out of those little, oh, what are those little gnome or fairy gardens that you get at Dollar Tree? You know, just whatever you like. I'm just using him because these are the kind of birds that are in my calendar page. But if you have something different in your calendar page, then maybe use something that comes from there. Now I'm just gonna add a little bit of white to him to kind of make him look a little bit closer to what's going on in the picture. And you know, he's got snow on him. That's not bad, is it? That's not too bad. So I'm just going to nip that off, just like I had mentioned before, and he will be nesting right here. But wait, he needs a nest. So I'm gonna make a nest. I started off by wrapping around two fingers. That was too much. So I just wrapped it around one finger several times and then after that, I'm going to tuck that string up through the middle or the hole there and just wrap it around a few times so that it helps hold the string together. And then I will be adding a little bit of hot glue. No need for this to have a bottom because I'm going to collapse it, push it into itself and um, put it underneath that little bird once I get it ready. I'm just gonna use a little glue in the middle of it to kind of push it together because there's no need for this to stick out too far, um, to really stand out too far. So that's what you see me doing, adding some glue in the middle, and then I'm gonna add some glue on what I'm gonna call the back of it, and then smush that down into the greenery. And then I'm gonna put some glue on the little bird's bottom and put him right down in the nest. Isn't he cute? Y'all, yeah, I think this is cute. I think he's really cute. All right, we're gonna move on to the next, and this is a bird shadow box duo. Some more paint, some more, actually I'm gonna use white instead of that. I have two of these little house frames that came from Dollar Tree. And of course, you'll need paintbrush and any types of little sticks, you can get them out of the yard, you can get them from Dollar Tree, like wood slices, you can thrift them. Just go pick it off a branch in the yard or on, when you're on a walk. These beautiful cards. You can see who was responsible for those cards. The cards were thrifted, by the way. I love to get cards thrifted because they don't weigh anything. And you know, I pay by the pound when I go to the thrift store. Push the backs out of your frames. They come apart pretty well. And then rather than peeling off that paper like I had started doing, I was like, you know what? Heck with this, nobody wants to waste the time. I'm just gonna flip it over, use the back, and we'll just cover up the front to make it a new back. I'm gonna smooth it out as much as possible. Y'all remember doing this in school? Turning the, the cards inside out, flipping them back and forth until you kind of weaken that center, and then you can just pull it right off. Love it, works perfect. So I switched over to this wicker white paint because the cards are actually more of a white color. They're not cream colored. And I want it to look somewhat the same. I'm going to go over in pretty much the same process as I went over the calendar page sign, just adding on a little at a time till I get the coverage that I like. Now, what are we gonna do with the frames? We're gonna tint them with wood tint. The first wood tint is gray. You gonna know, shake it up, apply it with a sponge brush. It's gonna soak in there and color that wood. Then we're gonna use walnut on the other one. I only have two shades and it's either really light and really dark. So I'm going over it with this walnut and I'm gonna go over the inside of the frame, the outside of the frame, the inside bottom of the frame, but no need to do the back or the bottom. Once you've let it sit for a little while, go ahead and grab some paper towels and just wipe off the excess. Now you don't notice that one as much, but look at the dark one. I should have done both of them like this because this really turned out pretty. That's such a nice, rich, dark color. I'm just gonna dry those off to make it a little bit quicker so we can move on with the next step. Okay, now we're gonna put these down. This card's a little bit too big for the width of this, so I am just going to trim it off. This is just like a little pendulum cutter that uh, I had with, you know, you can use it for scrapbooking, so it works perfect for these two. 
It fits perfectly on there now. All right, grab that good old glue stick and we're gonna go all over the bottom. You could go all the way up to the top if you wanted to because it won't make any difference. This purple dries down clear and you can't see it. But I wanna be sure I get full coverage which makes this colored stick perfect for me. Just adding a little bit more so I, I didn't go up high enough there, I don't think. And then place them down sort of in the middle. Keep in mind when you put your cards on here, and you can get cards at Dollar Tree, whatever, something that somebody sent to you, whatever you wanna use. Try to get it centered as much as you can because the frame when you put it back on is gonna cover up some of the picture if you get it too far up, too far down, or the picture is too big for the background. So just keep that in mind, save yourself the headache. Now we're doing the next one with the Cardinals. So we have a snowy owl over there and I have the Cardinals. So this is our duo. Just wiping off a little bit that I kind of made a mess with there. You know, you can wash your hands and get stuff off. I'm gonna get up and wash my hands every time I make a mess because if I do that, I'll never get anything done for y'all. And it's important to me that I give you inspiration. After that's dried, grab your Mod Podge. I'm just using matte, but you can use whichever type you like. And I'm gonna go all over the entire thing on the front of course so that when it dries it all has exactly the same finish it's going to look kind of milky when you put it on but don't worry because it is going to dry down nice and clear and you'll see that in a minute so notice the owl how it looks right now kind of foggy and here it is dry very crisp and clear i'm going to use some fast grab tacky glue by all means use your super glue or whatever type of bonding agent you like you don't want to use this, uh, you don't want to use hot glue with this entire thing because if you do, your hot glue is going to dry before you have enough time to get the back on. So just a couple of dots quickly, quickly after I've already put the other glue on to hold it in place while the tacky glue dries. And then you can add on the back some type of a weight to hold it flat. When you paint this MDF, these back, the little boards or the background right there, those will actually bow a little bit so you want to make sure that they stay nice and flat so that you get a nice clean edge right now of course on your backs put some paper on there and cover it up or paint it a solid color but for video you know purposes i'm gonna leave it like that for now grab up any type of stuff you get that you have like i said if it looks like it came out of nature and it reflects something that's in the card you chose go ahead and use it if you didn't use something in nature if you don't if you don't do the wildlife thing if you don't do the rustic thing whatever card you like find some little bits and bobs that match it i'm gonna use a little wood block on a snowflake and put it down in here with this owl and then i put a little it looks like a tree stump over there with the cardinals those pieces of wood came from dollar tree over where you can get the sand and the rock and stuff that's where i got it from love these packs highly recommend them now this came out of a little pack of, I don't know if it was called vase filler or table scatter, and it had snowy pine cones and vines and um, some other little bits and bobs in there. And um, I love it for these types of projects because you can really, really make rustic projects have more dimension and depth and just look more, you know, more rustic, I guess. More wild, and you know I like the wild stuff. So these little branches are kind of wild looking too, aren't they? Now those actually came in an arrangement and I pulled them out and I've been using them for years over and over different ways. You're just gonna add on here till you get it the way you like it. If you don't like the way I'm doing it, totally fine. Do it yourself, make it your own. I'm here to inspire you. Not to tell you what to do or that what you're doing is wrong, just to inspire you. You take what you like and just leave the rest, right? And by all means, if you don't like what you see here, you certainly do not have to watch. There are plenty of people who do not craft like I do that would be glad to have you, you know, follow them and support them. So just keep that in mind. I'm just gonna trim off some of these pieces. They look like little flowers to me, even though I know that's not what they are because they're woody, but they are very, they're pretty to me. And they look nice in these little boxes. These pine cones are tiny. You can also get these little bags of pine cones and scatter and like silver and gold. I've seen it in other people's videos, but I don't ever buy it because I, I kind of like the natural look a little bit better. Just my taste. How does that box look? I think it's cute. So now let's get back over here to Mr. Snowy Owl, who I absolutely adore. And I am going to 
cut down another one of these branches just to give you an idea of how this works. You know, you just cut the pieces off you like. I'm just looking at the branch, trying to see what curves and, and what directions and, you know, will fit on this box. And rather than putting them on the inside, I think that putting these on the outside would be a little bit different and still very nice and rustic. So I'm just putting these together in a way that I think they would look nice. Almost like uh, if it was like a little tree or a little bush that was growing there. I'm going to make a knot with my jute just around the bottom so that it holds all the bottom pieces of the branches that I'm using. Stems, branches, clippings, whatever you prefer to call those. And I'm just gonna wrap it around here a few times and then kind of go to the bottom just to make sure that everything is nice and secure. Then I'll add a little hot glue to hold it in place rather than tying it. And just trim off anything that's extra poking out. And then I can glue it to the outside of the box. I'm just kind of arranging it, you know, I'm arranging it the way I like it. And it, it's kind of overhanging into the box. I really like the look of that. It's like the owl is peeking out of the tree. And given that the thinness of these little sticks that I'm using, having it wrapped on the bottom like that gives me a good wide space to put glue on so that I don't have anything falling off. I'm just going to tuck this little branch underneath there with a little bit of hot glue and add some glue here and there to hold it in place. Now if that's enough for you, that's totally fine. Make as much um, changes as you want put as many sticks, limbs, rocks. You could even put stones in there. You could put um, dried florals in there, you know, if that's what you wanted to do. But I think the branches kind of mimic what's going on in the background and I like that. It looks like it belongs together. So I'm gonna go in with some of those same little wood pieces or the little, whatever those little white things are and then this the snowy pine cones and I'm gonna add them here and there and then I thought why don't I add some of those pine cones on the branches really give it some interest so I went ahead and did that these are definitely not pine branches but you know it's okay and this is how it turned out and I think it's pretty I've got a little glue to clean up down there on the bottom but I think it looks nice and I think these are a beautiful addition to anybody's winter home How would you do yours? What theme? The next one is a snowy owl wreath. I was inspired by this beautiful little bird from Hobby Lobby. I got him on clearance after Christmas. Very good way to save some money, but you can get birds at Dollar Tree too. This came from Dollar Tree is a mesh ribbon in white. This is a burlap unwired ribbon with stripes. And this is a wired cream color burlap ribbon. I also have some of these snowy branches, some purely snowy branches, and then some little limbs with icicles on them. This is a, I think it's a plate charger for the dinner table, I think. That's what it looks like, but it is a perfect wreath form, I think, in my opinion. Perfect for rustic. So I'm gonna just take my branches, and these are so well made um, that I don't have to do too much to them. And I like that about these branches. Already nice and full. And two of these branches, look how much coverage that gives on this project. Really good. I cannot remember where I got these branches from. To be honest with you, I do not remember. I'm going to use some zip ties and I am just going to wrap it around in nice little places where I can kind of hide the zip ties. That one will be hidden later. I know you can see it right now. Because there is so much opening in the kind of the crisscross of the woody background or viney or whatever that is, background, I can actually stick the stems down into the weave, which makes it nice too because I don't have to secure it down. It's stuck in there now. It'll stay right where we put it. I'm gonna hide another one of these down in there, cinch it down and clip it off. And then I am just going to fluff a little bit. They're on wired and plastic, and the good quality florals do have wire down most of the limbs, and it makes it so much easier, and it saves so much time for me. Even though I like to fluff bows, and I like to kind of fool around with my projects, and you know, I, you gotta touch everything, you gotta adjust everything, but it still does, you know, 
in the long run, I think could save you money instead of using really thin, sparse branches, I guess. If you can find them thrifting, that's perfect. So now these, I only have four of these, so I'm just going to mix these in here and there. And before I get them glued down, I am just going to place them in there and see how I like them. You know, I'm going to put them in both sides and then look around at the wreath and decide how I like them and which way is going to give me kind of a congruent look on both sides. I want it to be similar. Um, so cousins rather than sisters, right? So you just see me moving the stuff around here to make it look that way. Here's a little piece that fell off and I'm going to glue that right over the zip tie. Then we're going to start with these icicles. And I decided to cut one little piece off of one branch, weave this one on the top. I'm going to put another one here in this area and then the little piece that I cut off, I'm just going to add down here. Now, once you get your things where you want them, you can glue them in place. I'm going to take 18 inches of each of those ribbons I showed you and make three lengths of ribbon. So three striped, three white, and three of the mesh. And I'm going to dovetail all of them. So we're going to have nine pieces of ribbon to make this big bow. And yes, y'all, we're going to make a funky bow. Okay, so now I'm going to grab this one and fold it in half so that would be about halfway down nine inches would be about four and a half inches. So that's where I'm going to pinch it together and walk my fingers to each other and then place it right in my hand. I am not going to be opening my hand, my right hand. I'm not going to be letting go of that ribbon. I'm going to keep it clamped in and only move my thumb when I'm adding another section. So it's held nice and tight between the crook of my thumb and my first finger. I'm going to alternate colors and patterns so that no two things are sitting identically right next to each other. I know you can't see all of that, but you get what I'm saying, I'm sure. And you can see some of it, you just can't see all of it. You know what I say, once I get into crafting and I get in the flow of something, I stop paying attention to the fact that there's a camera there and the creator in me just wants to run with it. So that's kind of what was happening here. You know what I mean if you craft, right? You get it. So far, this is how it looks. All of the loops on the top and the tails are on the bottom and I'm gonna continue to add until I get all nine pieces in my hand and y'all, I have small hands, but I was able to hold all this. If you have arthritis, if you have problems with your hands, if you have really small hands, whatever the situation may be, and mine are small, you can use a clamp instead. You can just use some type of a clippy here, a chip clippy, uh, any type of a laundry clip. You can just use that to hold your bundle together to help you manage it until you get it all into one piece. Now, I'm still holding this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna grab a zip tie and then place it around there, still holding it. I have not let go. I'm going right around the bundle. Still have not let go. Doing this with my left hand, tightening it down, and then you can let go. Once you get it right where you want it, clip it off, and then you can fluff. Now on these funky bows, I like to start by flipping out the bottom. So I flip it over and put it on its top. And then you want to flip the little tails away from each other so that you don't have any two of the same pattern side by side. This is just going to give it more interest. It just is a better look. Um, just in my opinion, just in my opinion. So if you kind of look at these striped ones, that would be a good way for you to know what I mean. You see that I am flipping them all down facing the table because that will be the top of the bow when we flip it over. So they're all facing the table, right? All those stripes are down facing the table. And when we flip the bow, now you can see all the tails, all the patterns and the size, right? So now I'm just going to start kind of flipping and flicking around with those loops. And even though the other two pieces do not have wire in them, the uh, stripe ribbon and the mesh ribbon, they really do hold their own in this little bow, I think makes a funky bow very easy for these types of projects. Looks complicated is very easy. So since I forgot to thread a pipe cleaner through here, I'm just going to take a piece of floral wire and go through a couple of layers on the bottom. I just kind of thread this through. You just poke it through the weave of that burlap and it's a perfect way to save your project. 
I don't know why in the world I cannot remember to put a daggone something in my bows when I make them. I always forget. But there's always a solution. Could have glued it down if I wanted to, but no, I didn't have to. Now we got our wire. I'm going to cinch it around the back and then poke it back into that frame. And it makes a beautiful little bow for this arrangement, I think. Now you can choose how you want to um, kind of put your frame. Either you can do it where it's sideways, like I've got mine. You can do it where the bow's on the bottom. You can make it look like a swag on the top. Whatever you want to do. But I want it to look like my little owl is kind of nested in a tree. Look at this little hair fixing his little feathers. I could get some hairspray and play with it. He's so soft. And this is how he's going to look. His little limb, his little stem that was in the bottom just weaved right through there. I didn't even have to glue him so he could be plucked out and used for another project. And I like that. Here are the four projects. So there's actually two and then a duo. We got our little house frames here, which I absolutely love and adore. Here are the cardinals. Very pretty in all their splendor and glory, reminding us of loved ones who have passed on. And our little owl, our little wise baby owl up here in this beautiful wreath. The calendar sign kind of recycled some pieces from a trunk with some good memories in it. And then here's our beautiful snowy owl in his home. If you are new to my channel, I would love to have you subscribe. We do budget-friendly videos here all the time. Try to make it unique and something awesome for you. I offer you lots of encouragement and I appreciate you so very I appreciate you so very much. For those of you who have been here for a while um, you can't imagine how much I love and appreciate you guys your comments your likes your shares it just means so much to me so thank you so much for that again and I appreciate you stopping by as usual and I'll see you again soon bye